Today, we're going to be creating this particular cube growth animation. It's like a cube that's transforming into something more sci-fi. So let's figure out how we can create this. In our default scene, we're going to use geometry nodes to actually create the sci-fi cube. So we're going to bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to open a new window, and then change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we can press this button to create a new geometry node tree, and we'll actually be using the default cube itself as the main object. The first thing that we want to do is actually subdivide this cube and get a few of these faces and extrude them. So let's press Shift A and search for a subdivide mesh node and plug that in. And we can increase the levels and to actually see how much subdivision is happening, we can actually switch to wireframe view and that way we can see the subdivisions. So I'll actually start off with levels of three or two and go back to solid and search for an extrude mesh node. Now for the selection, we don't want every single one of them to get extruded. So we'll press shift A and search for a random value node and plug that into the selection, but we have to change it from float to Boolean so that a face is either selected or not selected. So that way you get this random selection and you can always play around with the probability to get more of them selected and extruded or less of them selected and extruded. I'll keep it at 0.5 itself for now. And we're gonna be playing around with the offset scale to create the actual animation. So since we're gonna have multiple levels of this particular set of nodes, we'll control all of them using a single value. So we'll press Shift A and search for a value node and take this and plug it right into the offset scale value. So right now it's at zero, but we'll keep it at one so that we can see the changes as we do it. So now let's just select these three nodes, press Shift D, bring it here, connect the mesh into the mesh, and this goes right into the group output. And now you have a second layer of detail. Now for this one, I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the probability a little bit. And for this offset scale, I'll use this value node directly there. And now you can do the exact same thing to create even more variations. So take these, press Shift D, plug them in right about there, plug the mesh into the mesh, and this goes into the output. Now, again, to actually prevent this from getting this detailed, you can always reduce the levels on the subdivide mesh as well to keep it down at one and you get this sort of a shape, which I think looks perfect for the animation that I want to create. Now the animation is essentially going to be reducing this value to zero and then to one. And when we're reducing it to zero, it's not becoming a cube again because we haven't connected this value into the offset scale of our last extrude mesh. So now a value of zero is gonna make it a perfect cube and a value of one is going to extrude it. Of course, you can go beyond one to whatever size you think suits your animation. Before we start the animation, I'll go ahead and set all of our render defaults and our animation defaults. So we'll go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. And under our ambient occlusion, we'll actually increase the distance a bit to one and we'll play around with the factor later on even more. For now, I'll keep it at two. Then I'll go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second, and the end frame I'm going to keep at 150, and the output folder can be wherever you want it to be, with a file format of FFmpeg video and an encoding, container changed to MPEG4, and an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Once you have that set, we also would like to give the cube a material, so we'll press Shift A and search for a set material node, plug that right in before the group output, and select the default material itself, because we don't have anything else as of now. Next, we'll start the animation by increasing the timeline a little bit. On frame zero, what we'll do is we'll take our cube and just rotate it till it's on its axis. And to get it to balance on one of its corners, we have to rotate it on the x-axis by 45 degrees. And that brings it onto one edge. And to bring it onto the corner, we have to rotate it on the y-axis by approximately 32.6 degrees. And that just brings it perfectly onto its corner. So now you can grab it on the z-axis and just bring it up if necessary, but you can leave it right here as well. And then on frame zero, we'll press I, rotation, and then we'll go to frame 150 and then just press R, Z, 360 so that it undergoes one full rotation and then press I, rotation. And down here, we'll press T, linear, so that it's a smooth loop as it rotates about the Z axis. And apart from that, we will also go ahead and play with the offset scale. So on frame 30, we'll go to our value over here and just hover over it and press I and select the node so that we can actually see the keyframes over here. And then on frame 120, we'll make the value go all the way to one and then press I. And then again on frame 150, we'll take this value of zero and we can either press Shift D and bring it here or we could just change it back to zero and press I, but that's all right. And now select all the nodes by pressing A and then press T linear. So that way you should be able to see the cube growth happening. And that looks pretty cool. Right now, our frame rate is at half of what it's supposed to be. You can clearly see it's going at around 17. So to see the actual speed, we can change it from playback play every frame to frame dropping. So that shows us a realistic speed of how the cube is morphing in time. And again, you don't have to have these last few nodes as linear. You could have keep them at Bezier itself. So let's select these two nodes, press T Bezier, 
and it depends on you. So that way it starts growing slowly and then speeds up in the middle and slows down again. While coming back, it comes down linear, which is perfectly all right. After that, we can set our camera by selecting our camera over here, pressing Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation, then R X 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees, then G Y to bring it back and just place it there. Then you can press zero to go into the camera view. I want to increase the focal length, so I'll change that to 25 so that it's more wide angle. Then I'll grab it back on the Y axis to bring it closer. And that seems all right. So now we have to actually give the materials. And to do that, we'll change our viewport shading to rendered so that we can see the changes that we're making. Switch this geometry node editor to the shader editor and then select the cube. And we already have the default material set up. So the first thing that I want to do is make it far more metallic and I'll reduce the roughness down to 0.3 and I'll reduce the base color as well to a much darker color. After that, I want some random lights to appear. So I'll press Shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. And in the Voronoi texture settings, I'll change it from Euclidean to Chebyshev so that we can get these nice squares. And to actually get the squares, I'll press Shift A and search for a color ramp and plug the distance into the factor to actually see what this looks like. You can select the color ramp and Control Shift click it with the node wrangler switched on. And you can see these squares, but we'll go ahead and just bring the black in a bit and switch the sliders so that the squares are white. And that seems all right. You can always play around with the scale to get more or less of these lines showing up, but I'll leave it as is. And I have to plug this into the emission strength. So I'll have to get it more than one as well so that we get the nice bloom effect. So I'll press shift and search for a math node and I'll switch it from add to multiply, plug the color into the first value, increase the second value to something high like 10, and then plug this value into the emission strength. Now for the emission color, we can choose whatever we want. For now, I'll go with maybe a nice bluish color like that, and then Control Shift click the principal BSDF with the Node Wrangler to actually see what it looks like. Now that looks perfectly all right, but when the cube is in this particular shape, I don't want there to actually be any of these lights. So till frame 30, I'm going to change this multiply value down to zero and then press I, and then about frame 60, which is one second later, I'll increase the value to 10 and then press I. And then again at frame 120, hover over this value and press I. And then at frame 150, reduce the value back down to zero and press I. So now when you play it, it starts off with none of the lights. And once the lights come on, it actually starts morphing, it finishes morphing, and then it goes off and the lights go off as well, which looks perfectly all right for me. Next up, I have to play around with the background. So I'll go to the world settings and actually increase the color all the way to white so that the ambient occlusion and the reflections occur much better. But I don't want it to actually look white. So I'll press Shift A and search for an icosphere. And I'll just scale the icosphere up by quite a bit. And then I'll press zero to go out of my camera view, press tab to go into the edit mode. And then I'll just select these five or six faces that are present right in front of the camera. So go to face select mode, select these six faces. So you can press Shift select to select them and then press X delete faces. Now you can see right through it. And that's what it currently looks like. Now we're going to go and give it a new material. So we go to the materials tab, press new and change the name from material 01 to background and we'll reduce the base color to black. Then continue to go down, increase the metallicness even higher and to not see anything outside the camera view, I'll just select the camera from the outliner, go to the camera properties, viewport display and increase passport out all the way to one. And that seems better. Next, I'm going to select the cube and I want it to be a little darker. So I'm going to go back to the base color and reduce the color even further down. And I also don't want this default light. So I'm just going to remove it. Now that seems all right, but I'm just going to select my icosphere, scale it up a little bit more. And I want more light to actually fall on it. So I'll make the roughness 0.3 and just press G Y to move it closer to the cube. And I think what I'll do is for the actual default cube, I'll change the base color from this dark black to a slightly bluish color. So I'll just give it a nice saturated blue with a very low value. And even for the actual world, I'll go ahead and change the color from this bright white to a slightly more bluish color, just a very slight bluish tint. And I think that should be all right. I might make a few minor changes just before rendering, but for the most of it, that is the effect. And all you have to do is press render animation. Hopefully you learned something from this tutorial. It was a pretty short one and it's just a technique that can be used to create different animations like this. It's very similar to the recursive subdivision tutorial, which in case you haven't checked out, you definitely should check out. The link will be in the top right corner right now. But thank you so much for watching. The watch time really helps. And if you want this file or the animation, they will be present in my Patreon, which is linked in the description. Until the next video comes out, which is going to be tomorrow, keep creating and stay creative.